So, uh, first off, hi. How's it going? Hello. Hope you're having a good day. Hello. Um, secondly, uh, I have the keyboard again. Mm-hmm. Uh, which some people have pointed out. It's like, <laughs> boy, when I saw Ben with the keyboard, I knew it was going to be a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Well, you'd be right. Uh, it's time for another episode of Sharpie and Quark. The Chronicles of Sharpie and Quark. I, I don't know. What do you want from me? Uh, this this episode. Thank you, Dan Harmon. Wait, dang it. Oh, I hit the reload button. There's a reload button on yeah. here. Neat. Uh, so this episode. this episode is entitled Cleft in Twain. As in Mark Twain? Yeah, are we getting in the oh, big river? Uh, Samuel Clinton. No, 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 no. Uh, so if you'll recall, last time on the Chronicles of Sharpie and Quark, uh, Sharpie sent his uh, Hacky Hawk's name up ah! to to scout the Avenger? area. Of it. Avenger. Avenger. <laughs> uh, and Quark told a bunch of riddles and then decided, hey, there's little people over there. I'm a little people. Let's go uh, run headlong into the forest and help them. Because also he was spoiling for a tussle. <laughs> of course he is. Yeah. He's an angry boy. He's a he barbarian. Is. What do you What do you want? So uh, that's got you pretty well caught up. He, this series is real great. And somebody asked, hey, are they going to react to the whole Harmon quest? And I'm like, why not? Maybe. It's real good. But uh, anyway. Boop. Wait, I said boop. I said boop, damn it. It's not booping. Why are you no booping? Oh, dang it. You probably had to reload. Uh, you went back. Ah! Ah! Of the Chronicles of Sharpie and Quark. There we go. whose names are etched into the very walls of fate itself. Who made destiny their bitch. Fuck yeah! Thank you, Dan Harmon. Yep. Fuck yeah! You charge across the bend and you see a clearing. There's the base of the cliff with the large door, just as Avenger had mentioned, and you see in front of it four goblins trying to puzzle at how to get in. Goblins? These are. This is not cool, man. Are they friendly? Or no, not? no, they're goblins. I have a. Hu- <laughs> Look, let's just let's just go away. Of you? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real racist. No, I agree. What, what's in the? What's behind the door? Well, we're first level. Yeah, we. I don't think we should fuck with four goblins either. <laughs> I, yeah, I gotta say though, my my natural barbarian curiosity wants to know what's behind that door. There's four goblins are trying. Well, it's to where we're it. going. Yeah. We, the, the scryer that told us to come <laughs> like here. Like a taped wrist and tie. How, how it's this? yeah. Let me go talk to the goblins. <laughs> I'm, I'm, can't talk to I'm goblins. short. I'm short. They'll see me as one of their own. There's no talking to goblins, man. <laughs> They're like monsters. I say. Let's fuck them up. Let's go fuck these goblins up. So here's the thing. Before, wait, wait, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Don't, no, no, no. I yeah. have a crossbow. I'm goblins are great. Crossbow. Yeah. You can see goblins. You can one out before you fly into a rage. All right. Let's so I want to fire my crossbow at All one right. of them. You fire a bolt loose from your crossbow. It whizzes past a goblin and thunks in the cliffside. Son of a bitch. This is, t- this is time for my catchphrase, which is, No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, <laughs> do a right. I'm going to go study magic. I mean, uh, oh what are my chances of taking on four <laughs> goblins on my own? You can run up to one and hit it. Let's do it. Launching Let's yourself at the goblin, you draw your sword and then a clean slice, splash at him. He is cleft in twain. Cleft in twain? Cleft His two halves fall bloodily to the floor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I think Ray of Frost sounds pretty uh, aggressive. Cleft in twain, I'm nerd. I'm yep. cast Ray of Frost. With a magical gesture of your hand, a ray of frost fires <laughs> forth toward duck. the goblin. He freezes and falls and shatters into pieces. Whoa, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you would have hit that first one with a crossbow, we'd only have one dude left. <laughs> I'm, I'm practicing. It's, a, it's, it's my B plan. They whirl around and notice that two of their brethren lie slain on the floor. They scatter like ants. Ooh. Did we scare nope. them off? You scared them off, We man. said they fucking... Dude, if you kill two of them before they turn around... We're like the cactus bunch. <laughs> Set in the rock surface is a large gold door and a large gold arch. Standing a good 12 feet tall, the door lacks any handles or hinges, mm. but its surface is marred by scratches and cuts. Of course. Many, many men have uh, been here before us and tried... Yeah in vain, just as those goblins were. Yeah. We're going to have to approach this with the minds of, 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 of sentience. 
right. So, Quirk, I'm going to confess, I, I drank a little bit before <laughs> the campaign. Right. I have to hang a leak. Let's get inside. Well, I don't think it's that easy, Quirk. Uh, the arch's keystone has a large pearl-colored eye whose lid is shut tightly. It appears to be made of a living material. I mean, do it, uh, Spencer. Do I have any any talents or skills that might? Uh, you can uh, you can look around. You can uh, maybe inspect the door. You can look <laughs> look on the floor. That's a skill. Looking okay. around's a skill. I, I promise. I, okay, I, I'm 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 going to invoke my God-given right to look around. There it is. You see a small square divot on the ground. It looks to be about 10 inches square. Hmm. I think there's a thing that goes in the divot, and that's like an Indiana Jones thing. Like if you have eye. any stuff in your inventory, you can use it. Oh, nice, nice, nice hint. <laughs> All right. Nice if you have any stuff in your inventory, steel, you can use it. A roll, a burlap sack, <laughs> of flint and steel. I got <laughs> 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 throwing knives? Holy fuck. Uh, <laughs> a compass, a uh, ball of twine. I can't stick my backpack in there. That's just stupid. What is this? Small 10 inch square. <laughs> use that, use that. What, is it, what, what does this say? Square what? Mirror. Mirror? <laughs> Stick it in there. It's going to shine a light. It's going to shine a light. Why do I have a small 10 inch square mirror? Just because for the hell it's, of it? it's used for scrying sometimes. Oh, okay. All right. So a scry. I, a scry I, I, look, I'm no wizard and I'm no human. I'm saying stick it in there. I think the sun's gonna beam in there, and then uh, here's what here's yeah there. here's what goblins couldn't figure out. I put my small ten-inch square mirror into the divot, That's so what that the she sun said. reflects into Shut the up. eyeball. <laughs> As you have pork. said it, it happens. The light streams into the eye. The eye winks open, and the door disappears. Nice. You know what? Yeah. I gotta say, Shar <laughs> Sharpie, Sharpie, let's just take this moment. <laughs> It's like we can't lose. Womp <laughs> <laughs> womp. <laughs> it's like we can't lose. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, man. Jesus. It's, uh, I'm going to invoke my God-given right to, to look, look around. around. I would have loved to have heard their response if it had to be a certain time of day for the light to actually hit the eye. And so then they, were, they were there at about mid-morning, I think. So... Yeah. But just the idea of what do you mean? Harm and town. Harm and yep. town. God I love that. that harm but it's and town. it's it's so good. And the fact that they record all of this in front of a studio audience. <laughs> yeah, the podcast is better. recorded live. It's even better. It's really good. Sharpie and quark. Yep. And just <laughs> the goblin just Cleft in twain. Cleft in twain. <laughs> <laughs> and they just lose it. <laughs> the uh, goblin is here by cleft in twain. Just. Oh. But yeah, so. Uh, Spencer does all the rolling for them. Yeah. And can sort of tweak it as necessary to keep the story going. But it's mostly just. Oh, so they don't have to okay. roll? Right, yeah. You give Dan Harmon the ability to determine his fate in an un in an unrestricted world to some degree. Well, just just remember, fuck. I couldn't imagine him being turned loose in a D and D game. Like it's like they can't game. lose. It's true. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, I wish there were a lot more of these, but uh, this particular animator uh, only did three of these as of. As of, uh, I guess now. early 2016. I'm. Um, let's go look. Let's let's go have us a uh, one year ago. Yep. So, but uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll wow. do that one. We'll do that one as a bonus. Yeah, after the third one. <gasps> yeah. It's not easy. Well, it it's gotten a lot easier over time because of did you know digital programs that are actually able to like. In between, animate a lot of this, a lot of like movements and actions and stuff. Yeah, but still, yeah, the base animations and and the in and the actions that take place. I'm just sad that this guy's only got like s less than seven thousand followers or seven thousand subscribers. Yeah, no, sh she does very good work. This is, I mean, this it's, is just uh, Stephanie. S Stephanie uh, Demers, I think. We've had this conversation before. It seems like animators like have. I mean, their work can be exceptional, and like 
because have a really small following. It's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I just like Mark Zhang. Mark Zhang did the uh, the silver, you know, the team silver yeah. from you know his Ruby OC characters, and those were brilliant. And how many subscribers he got? Like twenty thousand. Uh, uh, actually, Ego Raptor talked about this. He said in the early days of YouTube, like. 2009 2010 it was an animator's heaven yep. because yeah. animate because animations were like highly recommended because of you know because of their video length and also because of just because there was no there was nothing against them in the algorithm now the algorithm often recommends longer videos than shorter ones so if your video is shorter than say 10 minutes good luck yeah in which in which i think that's why we've we've sort of benefited from it because because we can't shut up. This is true. This is very very true. We cannot shut our freaking mouths. Oh God. Well, that was episode two. Yep, that was sharp. Left that goblin in twain. Yep. The Chronicles of Sharpie and Quark, episode two. Goblins. Yeah, goblins. Uh, and see, like that's the thing. They're like they're goblins. They can't be reasoned with. Goblins can absolutely be reasoned with. In, in D and D terms, they're a, a little integral. They have their own language and culture. Yeah. yeah, goblins are fine. It's, it's, just, just throw, just throw a thing of gold at them. This isn't, this isn't Lord of the Rings where like the orcs and goblins are objectively evil all the time. Yeah, right. like, um, the campaign that we were playing, Elena's dad. God help him, he looks at just about every movie, and goes, "Boy, you could solve this a whole lot easier if you just killed that guy." This is true. Well, it's true yeah. to some degree, but in all, but that's kind of a bull in a china shop way of going about it. A little bit, um, but that's that's sort of the position that I he's taking. I recently wa- rewatched the uh, MythBusters episode. Bulls are very well behaved they, around China. Okay, yes, they okay. very much are. Instead of bull in a china shop, how about a? Mm, what's the good? What's the good thing? A okay. How about Chico and a pile of burritos? I was just, I. Well, just destroys yeah. them. Or I was gonna say a ta- uh, a Tasmanian devil amongst uh, amongst a uh, mural of meat. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I'd say that's that's probably that test is proven. Oh yeah, but don't predict it. <laughs> but <laughs> they don't. Did you see the one where the one Tasmanian devil bit a bit a ribeye bone in half? Oh, just geez. trying to get through the steak. Like it was like it was like nomming its way through the steak. Gets yeah, to oh. the gets to the gets to the ribeye is like having trouble with it. Rips it out and then. Just like snaps it in two is with its teeth, and I'm just like, would you say that? Oh, that cleft, in twain. Was cleft, cleft in twain. Cleft in twain. There you yes. go. <laughs> Hi- highly developed carnassials exist for one purpose. Yep. There, yeah. So, to yeah. Uh, cleave things in twain. Well, yes. and then eat them. Harvest bone marrow. Yeah, exactly. So, 100%. Uh, I know that the comment section is like, why are y'all watching these D and D videos when you could be making D and D videos? I'm like, well, yeah. we have Cor- kind of. We did an Arkham Horror. I mean, Arkham yeah, Horror is. That's D and D on rail. It's limited D and D. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like well, with the little yeah. bumpers on. Yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, for beginners, Arkham Horror. Yeah, yeah Arkham it's a Horror, nice Arkham Horror introduction. Was, and and it was a like good way me, to like for me because I my limit my play in D and D is very 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 limited. Well, I mean, so in the the campaign that I'm doing right now, uh-huh. so Elena has had a fair amount of experience with D and D. I've played one campaign. Well, the second half of a campaign. Yeah. And uh, um, and the first half of a different campaign. Not even half. The um, first part of a different campaign. Mm-hmm. Which then is on uh, Michael had played 5th edition. Not which, very much, though. Not he, very much. He only played like four sessions. And, uh, um, but and he's, then the people who were doing the thing the thing broke up. So he, He's a quick study. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's very good at analyzing systems. Um, so okay, so all right. So then, would you say fifth edition is better? Fifth edition is better than four, but not quite as good as three and a half. Well, anything's better than four. Anything's better than four for one thing. There you go. Fifth edition things have gotten a lot more streamlined. It's like three and a half for beginners. Yeah, okay. and, which, and like which is fair. good. There honestly. are there are things from it that I'm borrowing and like I like this idea. I'm going to use it. Have they shortened the feet trees on a lot of stuff in fifth? Not so much. Well, mm. great. That's that's one. That's thing another really thing that I'm do. working on. Yeah. Um. But okay. Um. Elena's dad played second edition. Second edition, like you know, some some real OG shit. Well, 
you, well, you go back to the original version that was made by Gary Gygax oh, man. versus what we have now. Yeah, and it's like a world of difference. And then second edition, second edition was the kind of thing where you, you just made up a bunch. You made a bunch of characters because you a lot of them were going to die. You always had about three or four ready to go. There you go. Uh, and then Elena's mom and Carly and Jacob had never played. Hmm. And they've picked it up pretty well. Yeah. Like, we, we walked through character creation, and they, they figured out what they wanted to play. We did a couple of test battles, and they, you know, that worked out pretty well. But then it's just like... The the only thing they're a little uh, unsure about is the role-playing thing, and that just takes practice. Yeah. Being able to realize that you can do anything is a little scary. Yeah, it, uh, it and is. you don't want to do anything. Yeah, when you have too many choices, you can't choose. Yeah. And, there, and therefore, it's like you have no choice at all. Mm. But. But, yeah, so don't worry. When we play, mm-hmm. when we play, I'm saying this on camera in a when, video. When we play. When, because that way I can't get out of it. It's like Nate with Ooh. the hot pepper. Oh, no, I'm not I'm not getting out of that. Yeah. I will own up to it. Um. I'll I'll help you guys out and you know anything that well like you did with Arkham Horror I mean there yeah. were th- things in Arkham Horror I didn't at first understand D&D before you okay. I it's thought like, you had played it, some we back in the day when there were a couple guys like in middle school school early middle school, we we like pretended to play D&D but it didn't really work so you LARPed is what mm. you did yeah. just um, like the LARP okay. of the old like monster manual firebolt just for the artwork and like the lore I thought that was it yeah, is really it cool, is really yeah. Really Thunderbolt. Neat. Firebolt. Yeah. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. <laughs> Magic missile but, at uh, the darkness. It's, you've played Skyrim. Skyrim's I mean, like I, D&D except in a video game. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I kind of understand a lot of the stuff involved. Yeah, like, you you all will be fine. It's intimidating to look at it first, but, you know, we'd, we'd get you through it. Mm. I mean, Jacob, who has... An irrational fear of numbers. <laughs> Not a fear of irrational numbers. Just numbers. Just numbers. <laughs> he he claims to not believe in math. That is not Which a is very funny because he thing. knits. Which is not a very which he's, it's not very healthy. He's it's not very healthy. He is uh, really good at the knitting you need to do for math. It's almost like if his teachers had taught him properly in middle and high school and he was motivated, he'd do well. Yeah. Womp womp. <laughs> Public but, education strikes again. Well, no, it, well, actually, there's certain forms of public education, uh, like the Japanese form of public education, right, I just is mean far superior because rural. it's specialty. Because they actually, well, they don't tell you what you go into; you choose what you go into, and they have courses that are more tuned to what you are passionate about. Yeah, yeah. Like for instance, say Jacob was very passionate. Say Jacob is very passionate about knitting. There, then they would make his course load more home economic, more home ec based, and more based around how to, you know, how to do knitting patterns, how to do different different types of knitting, what different ni- different uses of needles. Like, they, has he has he ever designed his own pattern? No. Okay. Uh, not really. I mean, he's done modifications on patterns, but he's never started from scratch. I don't think. Well, okay. well, yeah, and you see, and you see. Uh, I wish here. that that's how it was here in the states, and I also wish that they would group by intelligence instead of age, because mm. well, not not in terms of not in full terms of say like separate like separating friends or anything like that, but you had the choice to move forward if you wanted to. You had the choice to move forward if you wanted to if you were advanced enough. Sort of sort of like a back. a more go at your own yes go at your own pace, pace. type thing yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. I yeah, and I took geometry and algebra two at the same time in my freshman year. So then, when I got mm. t- around to the higher level classes, I was at least a year behind everybody. Sometimes two years. Yeah, I mean, so, I, yeah, I mean, I did geometry and algebra two as well my my freshman year, uh, and then uh, and then actually. I was only required to take, I think it was two years of pre-cal, mm-hmm. and that you know, in order for me to like get my, you know, just get a normal degree, I had to have at least two advanced mathematics classes, and I did them, and I was actually, 
I was only one of the three kids in my class that did not get an advanced high school diploma. Hmm. <laughs> I got a standard. I got a standard. Actually, uh, I remember walking up there, and when you know, everyone said, uh, everyone said, you know, when when the uh, when the principal was handing out the was handing out the diplomas, he said, he said, with uh, he's like graduate is like with a. Uh, uh, with a, oh gosh, I don't think they've done it. No, I just yet. I wanted to check. Yeah, but yeah, I don't but think he, they but have. When they got to me, okay, cool. And he didn't say he didn't say advanced diploma when he did when he didn't say uh, with an advanced with an advanced uh, high school diploma uh, when he, when they didn't say that for me, like everyone was just like, wait what? What? Wait a second. And and then there was like uh, two more kids after me who didn't get it and. Uh, at the end of it, we all like came together and like held up our regular diplomas and was just called. We were like the normies. <laughs> What's an Lord. advanced diploma? Well, it's well for me. I got a silver emblem on it, whereas everybody else got a gold one. And it was for uh, it was for kids that took that actually re- not only completed all of their all of their uh, high school general education courses, but actually completed AP courses. Uh, okay. We had that. It was called graduate to distinction. Right? Yeah, yeah, which if you, if you completed five, like was it five AP courses? Four. Four. You could get to like a pass rate or something. Yeah. yeah it, it, yeah. There was I, there was a whole lot with that system that was oh, weird. Oh, you better what your grades were in the AP class because I was a graduate distinction. <laughs> you d- you classes. did fine. I wasn't good at them. Oh yeah, actually, you did. Plumber right here. Well, see, actually, I I was fortunate mm-hmm. because. I had a really good AP biology class because I had the old teacher before she retired, and then, oh, actually, just, and then oh, the, yeah, the yeah, people yeah, after yeah. that. The bad. silver, the silver distinction was actually on a uh, was actually on uh, something else uh, that I got from high school. Mine didn't have a sticker. The gold sticker went right here. Oh, I didn't get one. <laughs> I was I was one of the three kids in my class that didn't get a gold sticker. They actually declared me actually my. My guidance counselor, I'll never forget, Mr. Dotson. Yeah, real barrel of laughs that guy was. Declared me incorrigible. In- incorrigible? Incorrigible. Well, not, not incorrigible. I don't even know the meaning of the word. What's the word? He really doesn't. Un. Let's see. Stop it. Ah, oh, gosh, I forget what what word he exactly used. Not incorrigible, but. Impossible. Incorrigible, but. Uh. uh it was un something. It was incontrovertible. No. no. Okay. What? Wrong. What are you? Are you saying the top doesn't Pink come Floyd's off? The wall. Are you? Are you the judge from Pink Floyd's The Wall? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. No. Convertible jokes. Incontrovertible. There's no need for the jury to retire. Well, and the thing was, like with us no, too, you, was, you didn't even as long as you passed the class, you didn't have to actually take um, the test or pass it to get graduate distinction. Oh, you didn't have to take the AP test. No, so it was oh. trouble sheets. Like I. So okay. So, well, all right, all right. so Nate. Oh God. Said. Oh God, no. <laughs> Nate said a thing about a guidance counselor, and now uh, I have to, I have to find the right video because. Uh, oh God, no! What have I done? Yeah, you did a thing. What have I done? I I don't know where it is. Oh well. Oh, so we're gonna we're gonna cut this video short. So. Well, not really short. We're just going to... Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.